would motivate these guys to be, by being a lefty or a righty. Mr. Sambito was Jerry Kuzman every day. When he pitched, got him psyched. So we have a letter here that has to be written, uh, be read by Mr. Kuzman. All right, Jerry Kuzman from the Mets wanted to say something today, and it got a little long on the field, so we have two letters going to be read. This is by Jerry Kuzman first. Congratulations, Joe. I am sure the Beth Page Committee made the correct decision by picking you to honor this day. You were a great addition to the professional game of baseball, humble and God-fearing, with an abundant amount of talent on the field, and a complete gentleman year-round. I was honored to hear you were a Jerry Kuzman fan and would... What? <laughs> okay, Semitic, emulate. I hope you did that on your good outings and emula emulated Seaver on your bad outings. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Joe, you had your own style and determination that we also admired. Although I was in the American League for five of the seasons, you were tearing up the National League, plus hitting 286 in 1979. I was glad I wasn't pitching to you. I know I couldn't match your talent as a unique pitcher, but I do have more stolen bases. I would have loved to be here in person to help you honor this professional gentleman. Take care, Joe, and I'd like to say hi to all of you New York Mets fans. Yeah. 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 All right, guys, one more, and Mr. Sambito's going to have help me out with the name now. He was a broadcaster for the Houston Astros. One of Mr. Sambito's good buddies for life. Barry Warner. Barry Warner? Oh, gee. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. All right, guys. Here's another letter written to Joe because he couldn't make it today. Very deep breath. During my colorful career in media covering the wacky world of pro sports since the early 60s, I've been blessed by surviving partying with Joe Namath, writing and producing for the late Jack Kemp, worked for both Harold Cassette and Jimmy the Greek. I also was a pro football scout for Hall of Famers Paul Graham, George Hallis, and Al Davis. Bottom line, been around the block. Many here in Houston think of me as old school curmudgeon. But in my decades, Joe Sambito is an all-time top ten. Not because of his complimentary 60 feet 6 inches, but as a person, sharing every emotion two buddies can share. First met in the mid-70s in Coco, Florida, the spring training home of the Astros. Heard about this lefty from Adelphi, saw him on the back diamonds, and followed his minor league career. It didn't take a rocket scientist to realize, barring injury, this kid had all-star stuff, period. Two years later, he was on the show, the dream of every kid who played Little League ball to become a big leaguer. But unlike many, lefty, but unlike many, lefty never big leagued anyone. He was fun to be around, mentioned his name to ex-teammates here in Houston or guys coming through here as scouts, managers and coaches. They all light up when they hear his, his name comes up. The same is said by the kids who represented and prepared for life after baseball. Aretha Franklin's first solid gold hit sound in the 60s said it best. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. He was never bitter about the surgeries that robbed him or more stardom in millions. Millions. Joe was always a glass full kind of guy. Joe's sense of humor was wicked as his fastball. Over the years, Joe played for the Astros. I lost track of how many times he just nailed me, but I got him back big time. I was the MC of a fundraising charity gala roasting a teammate. Over 1,200 people were in the audience. Joe was seated on the dais, dais sorry, to my immediate right. He could not see to my left where I had a large pitcher of water. While introducing him, I gradually moved the pitcher where he could not see it. As he started to get up from the seat, I doused his 